It's the cot episode 36. Episode 36. You feel me? You feel me? Oh man. Stop playing. Yes, sir, with your host Ryan and Paul. That's Paul and Ryan, man. We back at it again. <laughs> we got the homie sitting Whoa, down man. with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. And hey, go ahead for the uh introduce yourself, man. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. Appreciate the invite, man. You know, uh, my name is Dimitri, you know, quick background. Uh, born and raised in Rwanda, you know what I'm saying? Came to the States when I was like 11, 10, 11. Uh, you know, from there, just the whole, you know, Im- immigrant journey, you know, just like any other person. Um, went to school, you know, did, did a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, fast forward after high school, Juco. You know what I'm saying? After the JUCO and the pharmacy school. So just uh, recently got my uh, doctor in pharmacy. You know what I'm saying? I uh, was a pharmacist with Sam's, Walmart for a year. And I uh, just started with CVS now. You know, CVS, man. C- CVS. Yeah. You guys giving out, you, you giving out those COVID shots? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, you know, we've been giving them out for a while. But was doing like the, um, you know, the elderly homes. We haven't started giving them out in a uh, retail setting yet, but we're gonna be rolling that out soon. Wow. And for the people, for the people who might not know, can you explain to us what JUCO is? A junior college. Yeah. Okay. Junior, okay. Word. 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 Yeah. Junior college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like everybody. You know, most people out of high school. You know, you're trying to follow that sports dream, or you know, one really too focused on school like that. And uh, you know, mom's like, you either gotta get out the house, or you gotta go to school. You know. Yeah. You know, it's too late to put in those university applications, so you got to go to the neighborhood JUCO or junior college. So when did you decide you wanted to uh, venture into uh, pharmacy, be a pharmacist? Man, it kind of uh, it kind of just happened as you know throughout time. Um, I mean, I knew it had to do some in the medical field. You know, I mm-hmm. see my mom, uh, you know, grinding and becoming a nurse when we got out here. You know, barely speaking any English. And uh, you know the standard with her always that you know you, I had whatever whatever we did it had to be we had, we had to top her you know whatever she did we had to overdo that she became a nurse so I knew it, was, it had to be something in the medical field um, you know so first year in junior college I wasn't really paying too much attention to it uh, but you know after like the second year I was like man I gotta I gotta stop getting more serious you know I got younger brothers you know they're looking up to me so. I got to set the bar for them like my mom's did for me, you know? Uh, so I, I, I was thinking about doing maybe like physician assistant, dentistry, one of them. And um, all those programs required you to have a uh, bachelor's before you could apply um, to those doctorate programs. And, um, you know, one day I have, I have bumped into one of my, one of my friends from, uh, from junior college and he, he was telling me he recently got into pharmacy school. And I'm like, yo, you know, he was just here with me. You know, how'd you get into pharmacy school that fast? Is like you just gotta, you know, to get into pharmacy school, you just need to take the prereqs and take the PCAT, which is like uh, the entrance exam, uh, you know, and then you apply to pharmacy school. And I'm like, man, that cuts out that uh, bachelor degree. So, you know, I was trying to finish as fast as I can, you know, start start working and get in this field. And, um, you know, I went ahead and I looked up the nearest pharmacy schools around me, looked up their prereqs, printed those out and then match them up to the classes I took at college, uh, at the Juco I went to, which was actually College of DuPage. Uh, up in okay. The- yeah. So, uh, you know, did the prereqs, took the PCAT, applied, um, got into a few programs, and, uh, you know, I ended up going to Chicago State. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Like, fifth and King. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you know what's crazy, man? You, you hit on something, man. I, I always talk to people about, you know, uh, like pretty much going on your journey, right? Knowing that, what direction you want to go, and and you have kind of a unique experience, especially like coming to this country. Like your 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 mom didn't speak any English, like you trying to figure it out, right? So it's it, so it's funny, man. It's when when you talk to people and and they come up with a lot of excuses on why they don't move forward and and they're not motivated to, you know, what I'm saying, take that next step or yeah. or do what they need to to to, to, to get to that next level. Um, what was kind of your motivation? I know you mentioned your mom, but like, you know, when you get into school, you, you kind of got to dig deep inside yourself and be like, man, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? So, so what was your motivation? Now you definitely have to, man. You definitely have to. And 
man, honestly, I said the biggest motivation we got for anybody, bro, is your surroundings, you know, what you're around. Um, the biggest motivation for me is having younger siblings. You know, I got I got a few younger siblings, and it's like, I cannot tell them to be great if I ain't great. You know, how can I tell them go to school if I ain't in school? I cannot tell them, you know, man, don't just settle for a degree in ABC one two three. You know, if I got a if I got a degree in ABC one two three, so that was the biggest thing for me having younger siblings, and not just that. You know, um, it's 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 kind of you know it's good and bad in a way, but coming. The, the the journey we took to to actually get the opportunity and the blessing to come to America, you know what I'm saying? It was not a real easy route. And being at the age that I was, I got a chance to actually, you know, see and experience that. So once I got here and seen everything that, you know, is available in the US, you know, it was it, it would have been it would have been selfish of me not to take, you know what I'm saying, utilize that and take those opportunities. So that's always been in the back of my mind too. And Seeing my mom, you know, coming out here with no school background, um, you know, go to a junior college, you know what I'm saying, working at Krispy Kreme Donuts and, you know, regular nine to fives while raising all of us. And, you know, she, she get into nursing, you know what I'm saying? She finished with her nursing. It's like, there's no way I could, I, I couldn't do nothing. I had, whatever I had to do, you know, it had to, it had to, 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 to go above that, you know? So that was my biggest motivation with that. And, I didn't have no plan B. And it was, it was no plan B. It was is, is it this or that or, or nothing, you know. And right, right. I have some bumps, some bumps throughout the road, some ups and downs, you know. Um, but as long as you ain't got, I ain't have no plan B. So I had to make it at any cost, you know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just what it was. So I had to get it done, man. Hey, hey, sometimes not giving yourself a choice is the best thing to do, right? <laughs> hey, man, I, hear, I hear that. I, it's crazy. I recently had heard somebody say, like, you know, speaking about Plan A, Plan B, is like, you know, when you got a plan, when you when you make, have a Plan B, it takes away from Plan A, you know. So you, you gotta go. You get, once you know what you want and you know what you want to get, you know, put everything into that. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you're already thinking about Plan B, you already you already are setting yourself up. If you yeah, fail, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro, you got to stay uh, focused. So when did you actually start working at the uh, pharmacy? When did you actually get behind that counter and start realizing all of your education kind of work for you? Uh, I mean, you know, I was uh, I was a technician before pharmacy school. So mm -hmm. uh, once once I realized that, you know, pharmacy was where I wanted to go, was the route I wanted to take. Um, I actually started looking into like, man, how before I applied to pharmacy school, you know, it's more than just your school background. They got to look at your volunteer work, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's your past work experience? And you got to, anything that you can do to beefing or, you know, make that resume look good. And I figured, you know, having some type of pharmacy experience would definitely look good in application. So the, the fall before uh, school started, I had applied um, at Walmart. You know, they didn't, they didn't have any pharmacy openings, but they had an opening as a pharmacy sales associate, like just working in the OTC aisle, you know, so I applied for that. Um, I got hired to do like the pharmacy over the counter, OTC is over the counter, um, you know, but the pharmacy was just so busy, you know, God kind of, you know, played his way through everything too, because I got hired to be over the counter. The pharmacy got so busy to like, hey, um, you know, you can come in a pharmacy, but just do ring outs, you know, actually no, don't partake in any of the pharmacies that were just ringing out. I say, cool. So I'm ringing out, I'm ringing out. You know, he was mad busy, like, ah, right, you know, we're gonna show you how to feel, um, you know, this, that, and the third. You know, after a couple months later, you know, I was trying, I was, they switched me over to a pharmacy tech. You know what I'm saying? Um, to be a tech, you all you need is to go to the get your pharmacy tech license, which you pay, I believe, it's like twenty-five, fifty dollars to pay. You get your tech license, and um, you know, once you start working, you, they give you uh, two years to get certified, or you could do classes on your own and get certified. So, so you got to get your certification is is different than just a technician license. The technician license allows you to be in the pharmacy and work in the pharmacy. Mm. But yeah, so because it was so busy. You know they put me they, they they put me behind the they put me in the um, as a technician so I started getting that pharmacy experience and I was able to put that on my resume 
when I was applying to pharmacy school that I had technician experience, which, you know, I believe played in my favor as well. Set you up for success. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, um, so, so 2020 was crazy for everybody. It was crazy for, for a lot of fields. And um, how did it affect you? How did it affect your job? And, you know, uh, what are the things that changed? What are the things that stayed the same? And, and, and how did it kind of put stuff in perspective for you? Man, 20, yeah, 2020 was definitely crazy. Um, you know, I know a lot of a lot of situations with in, in the work field with people. Um, you know, but luckily for the pharmacy field, we didn't really lose anything as far as like work or hours. You know, if anything, it actually increased the work and increased the uh, the hours. So throughout the whole pandemic, man, we was fully all hands on deck. Um, you know, the pharmacy was busier. Um, you know, and then especially when they started rolling out the vaccines, it even, you know, erased everything by like 10. Um, so, you know, it's definitely for us, we, we got an increase in, in our work volume and workload. Mm. Did, did you get, did you get, did you have like a, high, a more of a demand for, for uh, medical professionals to help you guys out? Because I know a lot of uh, hospitals and a lot of places were shorthanded. Yeah, the pharmacy was definitely shorthanded because, you know, we, you got technicians who, you know, why you, it, we contain we contain the COVID as much as we can. While in a pharmacy, you know, we have PPEs. Um, but once somebody goes home, you really can't contain or control that. So we got technicians who was catching COVID. Now they oh, got wow. they got to go out for uh, you know so many so at a time. Now the pharmacist is short staffed. You you know you're looking for techs here and there, um, as well as pharmacists. You know some pharmacists who catch COVID. When they catch COVID, you got to quarantine. So now you're down, you're one person down, but the pharmacy got to still be running. Um, so, you know, the volume definitely got super crazy. And um, man, I really think like retail pharmacy is one of those medical fields that really didn't get as much as attention or didn't get as much um, mention, you know, throughout this pandemic as I feel like they should have, because we definitely was on the, you know, front, on the front line. Um, COVID hit, you know, grandma still needs a, a blood pressure medication, you know. Um, then when, when doctors was, you know, trying to prescribe, uh, you know, the antibiotics that was given or the medication that was trying to treat COVID with, you know, we was dispensing that medication, you know. So we still was active, but, you know, I, I don't feel like we was highlighted as, you know, much as we should have or, you know, uh, as involved. I feel like we was more involved, you know, than people know or, you know, it was show. Well, that's why you want to car because they know now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, have you have you actually administered any shots yourself? Uh, the COVID the COVID shot. So, I personally have not yet. Um, so, I've been working in a in the retail settings, uh, but uh, we've been doing the, the vaccines. We've been doing them at sites, at various sites. Um, even other pharmacies have been doing like uh, you know the mobile, uh, going into various neighborhoods, administering the vaccines. Um, and because there was, you know, it was different uh, criteria uh, to get the shot. So the shot, the shots are not available for everybody at the same time. Right. You know, it was they had the uh, uh, first responders, first line, then you had the elderly. Um, so we just now starting, um, you know, to roll out the vaccines being available to the regular population, which right. is now we're going to start administering vaccines in the retail setting. Right. You know, like I mean, for the flu shot or the shingles vaccine, uh, like that. Yeah, you you mentioned the uh, the elder the like the elderly um, and and the old folks homes, um, but I know it was a big deal probably like a month or two ago when they were talking about how like how like uh, well not not even a month or two ago probably maybe even you know uh, more recent than that but how they said COVID was hitting the uh, the elderly real bad in those homes and those you know is that why you guys are kind of focusing on that or is it just the rollout in general? No, they're they're at the most high risk. Um, you know, so it's kind of like the, 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 the patient population that's more at risk or high risk got the vaccines first. Um, you know, you got people in those nursing homes who got various disease states, um, you know, a lot of respiratory problems, um, you know, COPD, asthma, um, you know, the list goes on and on. So they, 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 are, they, they were the main focus because they were more at risk as compared to you know, a healthy individual, you know, who quarantine and be at home and, you know, stay away. Um, right. And, you know, the COVID is still being studied. Um, 
you know, but it uh, it affects it, if uh, a, a younger, healthier person was to catch COVID, it may not necessarily as an impact them as it would your grandma catching COVID, you know, who's taking six, seven other medications and end up telling the type of complications that COVID um, can cause in addition to the complications that they have. Uh, yeah. yeah, sir. Yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like um, this, this this might be controversial, but I'm gonna ask it because me and Ryan have talked about it a couple of times. Um, they, they talk about like you know the way you eat, you know what I'm saying, the different things that you put in your body as far as nutrition and you know what I'm saying proteins and things of that nature. You being a pharmacist, you being a pharmacist, I, I, I kind of want to know like what's your take on that? You know, holistic medicine versus taking the pills, you know, because because we just had like a, a opioid epidemic and you know what I'm saying? I think I think there's yeah. still one going on. I mean, you know, when it comes to that, you know, perfect examples I can give is like, you know, our great, great, great grandparents, they didn't really have the same medications we have, you know, and I was able to live, you know, how they, 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 they actually lived longer than we did, you know, um, it's just a different age, different time. Uh, I feel like in our time, our generation, we need those medications because of the type of stuff, of, because of our surroundings. You know, um, in the in the older times, it was more home cooked meals. You know, it was more uh, vegetables, greens. You know, nowadays you're hungry. You know, you get a four for four. Keep it pushing. You know, so definitely, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know what you put in your what you put in your body is going to reflect how your body reacts. You know, how your body functions. So. Um, but at the same time, also, you can't have somebody who has a great diet, you know, exercises, you know, um, but they catch something or they, you know, they have, they have a particular disease state. you know, some of this stuff is also inherited. Um, so with that being, with, with, with that have being said, you know, some things you need medication for. Um, if you look at most of disease states, you know, hypertension, um, cholesterol, uh, diabetes, the number one um, Initial, the initial treatment your doctor would tell you is lifestyle modification, you know, exercise, dieting, you know, what you put in your system, uh, you know, any any type of aerobic exercise. You don't necessarily even got to be like going to the gym every day. You know, it could just be like when you when you go grocery shopping, park in the farthest parking lot, you know, so you can get a decent little walk to the, to the store. Take this escalator instead of the elevator, you know, so the number one treatment is lifestyle modification. Um, now, when you get into the you know, not taking, you know, everybody come, they got my great, great grandma, to, you know, say, take, you know, Father John's, you know, you can you can still use it to this day, you know, but everybody doesn't know about Father John's, you know, so there's nothing wrong with that as well, but there are certain things that, you know, you have to take medication for, um, you know, once you get diagnosed with, with high blood pressure, you don't really have symptoms when your blood pressure rises, and if you stop, you know, somebody be like, man, I, I'm okay, I don't feel nothing, I'm gonna take medication, it's like, you know, once you're diagnosed, man, you know, you, you gotta, you have to take your medication. You may miss a dose here, go to sleep thinking you're fine, you know, and your blood pressure is rising and now you got a stroke. You know, now half your body's paralyzed. Something that could have been avoided from just taking one pill a day. Now you're on four, five, six medication a day, you know, and half your body's messed up, you know, because a lot of times you get a stroke, you don't necessarily come back the same if you come back at all. Dang. Eat clean and, and wash your hands. <laughs> it's the message. It's the balance. The founding fathers' messages. <laughs> you heard? Now, touching on what Paul said about you know the opioid epidemic and stuff like that, um, you know, recently, like, say, like my brother had his uh, you know, uh, wisdom teeth taken out, and they you know put him on pain meds and stuff like that. And my mom immediately was like, you know, let's let's cool it on the the pain meds. Cause she didn't want to take that risk. Obviously there's a lot of kids who, who this epidemic kind of started for when they have like an injury or sports industry or sports uh, injury. Right. And they get on these meds and then they get hooked on these meds. And then when that runs out, they turn to other things. So have you kind of, what have you seen in your area of work? Have you seen people kind of reject taking pain meds because they know about that risk or have you seen people who who you might think are at risk but you can't necessarily say anything because you're not really you know their doctor all you can do is just kind of fill out their prescription and and kind of give them stuff how have you kind of like seen that play out yeah i mean you know 
Yeah, with, with, with in, in that type of situation, um, you know, in a pharmacy, we get a lot of patients um, who come with various opioids or control medication, and um, it's up to the pharmacist to dispense that medication. So just because the doctor writes the prescription does not mm. mean I have to fill it. Um, if the doctor sends a prescription for, you know, a particular opioid, before I fill that pres- prescription, I'll go over the patient's profile, you know, see what they've been taking, you know, um, what's going on. And if there's ever anything I got a question or, or you know, I call the doctor like, hey, um, what are we treating? Um, you know, how long are we treating for? Uh, you know, what's the patient diagnosis? So I can I have the opportunity to do all that before I feel that medication. Um, you know, now it is a certain patients that come that's really, um, you know, that are on this, on these chronic opioid medications. And, you know, for example, when you got cancer patients, you know, they're, their own strong um, pain medications, and that's it, it gets tricky with, with pain with treating pain because there's no you, you can't evaluate you can't really um, you know test for somebody's pain you know nobody knows your pain but you you know they give you you, you can you, I can't look at you but like your pain is at a three or your pain is at a five you know or is at a ten only you would know that so. so that's a conversation that you have with your doctor before they prescribe that to you. Once that's prescribed and it comes to my pharmacy, um, or to any pharmacist, it's their responsibility to see what the medication the doctor gives or which opioids, because it's various opioids you can get. Um, you know, figure out, of, see what they're treating, see what's going on, how long it's being treated for, and, you know, to differentiate, um, are they treating for a, a purpose or is this patient misusing this medication, you know? And right. That's you make that decision. And, yeah, but again, every pharmacist is different. Everybody takes their own uh, different steps. Um, but with uh, controlled medication, you know, it's, 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 it's highly regulated. So, uh, you know, I believe every pharmacist takes that time to see, that, you know, look, look, look at over there before they submit and just feel it. Oh, man. Now, can you, my bad, just to uh, build on that, we might have to send you another link because I kind of want you to answer this. Um, what, you know, you, you said that, you know, when, when a doctor fills out a prescription, you still have to go over that. It's not, it's not necessarily a done thing just because the doctor fills something out. And, you know, you kind of have to evaluate as well. So with that line of thinking, obviously you have to know about a whole plethora of diseases and the medication that, that goes with each disease. So what are, I was, I guess the question is how far does the education go to be a pharmacist? Do you have to learn about Yeah, it's a doctor. A lot, you know, like, okay, cool. Yeah. Speak, speak to, I guess, what you have to like learn to be a pharmacist that people would not think of, you know? So, a pharmacist to get a pharmacist, a pharmacist degree is a doctorate. You're a doctor of pharmacy. Um, you know, you do pharmacology. Uh, you know, you, you don't do as much pharmacology as med school, but you're uh, you do more of learning about the medications. Um, you know, the interaction, the way the medication you know uh, affects the body. So, when a doctor writes a prescription, a lot of times, you know, doctors may write pres- they write a prescription for whatever they're treating at that particular time, and once it gets to the pharmacy, it's up to the pharmacist to review that medication, make sure it's the correct, it's the correct medication, it's the correct dose. Um, you know, it's, it's, if a patient is a, a young uh, a child or an adult, there's different kind of doses for that medication. You know, so with pharmacy, you know, you you you, you learn all of this in pharmacy school. So it's it's a doctorate program. So you do your undergrad. And then you go to pharmacy school, which is typically four years of school. Okay. Last year is rotations, you know, um, and in that rotations, you, you're doing rotation at various pharmacy sites, whether it's re- uh, retail, hospital, um, wherever it be. So, um, you know, you, you have a good understanding of, you know, the medications and disease states and, you know, the, so you know what's going on. Um, you know, you're not just getting a prescription, submitting it, pouring some pills in the you know, in the, in, the, in the bottle, closing and giving it out. You know, it's way more that goes into that. Putting the pills in the bottle and closing it, that's the last step. Wow. Hey, man, thank you for that, because I think a lot of people need to hear that. Um, you know, they need to hear kind of that there's other things. You know, a lot of times when people think of the big careers, it's doctor, it's lawyer, um, 
and things like that. But there's obviously, if, if you want to get into medicine, it's not only being a doctor or a nurse, you could also, you know, take the route that you did and, and go to pharmacy school and get that doctorate and work in a pharmacy. So I think, you, you know, having you on today is a good example for people who want to get into that field and who might be considering their options. And also, you know, just speaking from that immigrant standpoint, I think just the hard work you spoke to and the example that you're setting for your, your, your uh, younger siblings is something that I think our audience could really benefit from hearing. So thank you for sitting down with us today, man. Nah, man, gratitude. Appreciate the invite, man. Yes, sir. Hey, it's all love, baby. It's the Kai. Hey, Episode 36. Demetri. Yes, That's right. Thank you.